In this video, I'm going to show you all the new AI features in Photoshop and how incredibly useful they can be. Okay, let's get into it. Hey everyone, so Adobe have just released a bunch of new AI features for Photoshop and Photoshop Beta. So I'll go through the top seven features. The first of the new features I'm going to talk about is the new generative fill with reference. Now this is awesome as you're able to use a reference image to help create a certain look for generative fill. Okay, so for an example, I've got this image of this man and I want to change his clothing. I've got this image of a striped black and yellow jacket as I thought it might be a good visual style to add to the character. So this will be my reference image. All you need to do in Photoshop is select the area that you want to replace. So I've just loosely selected the area that I want the jacket to go in. And all you have to do is click on Generative Fill and then just click this icon to use a reference image. I've selected that yellow and black jacket and then you can write in a description of the jacket. So I've wrote in a yellow and black striped jacket and click Generate. And hopefully what this should do is kind of look at the jacket that I used for reference and create that style on the man. And the results don't look too bad. It's not a perfect one-to-one -one copy of the jacket I used for reference, but it's done a really good job at kind of taking that style and implementing it. As if I just wrote in a black and yellow jacket without using the reference, it may have looked quite different. Just to show you how powerful using the reference image is, these are the results I got without using the reference image, but with the same prompt. And as you can see, they are not that great. It's come up with three completely random styles. This one, it's like a basketball jersey. This one looks like he's working in a fast food diner. And this one is more of a construction worker. So I can already see the benefits of using a reference image with generative fill. And here's another example of putting that yellow and black jacket onto someone. So here I have two office workers just walking down the hallway. So I selected the area where I want the jacket to be and I excluded where his hand and the mug are as I want them still to be in the image. And then I just wrote in a black and yellow striped jacket along with that reference image and it did an awesome job of adding in the jacket. And it's even kept his hand and mug in the shot. And now I'm going to try a different reference image to see what kind of results we can get. So I've used a blue jacket as a reference image and I wrote in a blue jacket in the prompt. And again, they came out looking pretty good. Now the reference image I used had a bit of text on it. So I think it's trying to replicate that, but you can always get rid of that text by selecting it and then clicking generative fill. And I just leave it blank and click generate. And there you go, it's got rid of that text. So this just shows you if you do use this and you notice some blemishes or mistakes on it, then just use generative fill again on that object and it will get rid of it. And I think this actually looks pretty realistic. If I saw this photo on a stock website, I wouldn't think twice to think that the jacket was made by AI. So if we look at the original image and then with the AI clothing using a reference image, it looks really, really good. And you can do this for anything. Just make sure you've got a really good reference image to use. Just a heads up, this is only available on the beta version of Photoshop. And most of the new features are only available in the beta version. So make sure to download the beta version of Photoshop to access these features. To get the beta version, you just have to go to apps in the Adobe Creative Cloud desktop app and then click on beta. And then you will see beta versions of all the different software and make sure to just click on download Photoshop beta. Now let's have a look at the new text to image, which uses Firefly image model three, whereas the non beta version of Photoshop still uses model version one. So when you open up a blank document, you will notice a generate image button here. Now, if we click on this, a whole new image panel shows up and there's some really cool features in here. So I'm going to create an image of a cat wearing a hat in an office. And you get to choose if you want it more of an art style or a photo style. So I'll click on photo. You can even use reference images if you want, and you can add effects. And on the right side, you have prompt inspiration. 
Now this is really cool, as if you're looking through these images and you really like one of them, all you have to do is click on one, and then it will add the prompt into the box, which describes that style. So as you click on them, you will notice the prompt will change. This is really good for inspiration, as if you like one of these images but want to create your own, then you can use this prompt, and then you can just edit this prompt to make it your own. So I'll go back to a cat wearing a hat in an office, and then if you click on effects, you can click up here to popular or movements, and here you have loads of different effects you can apply to your image, which is awesome. So you have hyper-realistic, digital art, layered paper, you even have art movements, like cubism, art deco, themes, from 3D to anime. There is so much to discover here. I won't add any effects into this one, and I'll just click generate. It generated some really cool images, and I think they look pretty realistic. So just going through some of these images, it looks like a real cat wearing a hat inside an office, and I'm pretty impressed. Now let's use the same prompt, but this time using Photoshop's Model 1 version to see how big the difference is. So I've got a blank document, and instead of clicking Generate Image, I'm going to select the whole area and click Generative Fill. And then I'll add in the same prompt of a cat wearing a hat in an office, and click Generate. And the results are night and day compared to the Model 3 version. As you can see, it's just kind of randomly choosing a style, as this one is a kind of very basic drawing of a cat. Here is a cat wearing a hat in an office, but it doesn't look quite right. And here's another one of a very simple cat drawing. And yeah, the results just aren't <laughs> that great. So as you can see, the new Model 3 is much better. Now going back to our Model 3 version of the cat image, let's have a look at changing the style of the image. So you just click here, I'll click on Art instead of Photo, and I'll choose Painting. And again, it's created some really good results. So here is a painting of a cat in an office wearing a hat. And here's another one, and here's another one. This one isn't so good, but the other two look great. And here is a watercolor version, and they look fantastic. And now let's go back to the Model 1 version. Because there's no art style in the Model 1 version, I've just put in watercolor at the end of the prompt. And hopefully it should create an image that looks like a watercolor painting. They just look a lot more basic compared to the Model 3 version. It's advanced quite a lot with the new beta version. As you can see, if you compare them, it's a huge difference. Alright, so now let's have a look at removing and changing backgrounds. So I've got this image of a man on a mountaintop. And as you can see, there is this remove background option here. So let's click on that. And now the background has gone, you will notice a generate background button has appeared. So click on that, and then type whatever you want to be in the background. So I've put in New York City Street with dramatic lighting. And they don't look too bad. This one isn't so great, the cars look a bit funny, but I think this one and this one look pretty good. And here's another prompt I used, but with a beach instead of a city in the background. And they look pretty good, it's even matched the lighting on that side of the screen. Now let's have a look at the new font panel, which is available in both Photoshop Beta and the normal version. I'm going back to the image of a cat in a hat. So if you click on the text icon here, you will notice there is a new drop down menu. And you have all your classic ones here. But if you click on more fonts, it allows you to use all of Adobe fonts in there. And there are thousands to use. This just opens up so many more options for fonts to discover. And there are some really cool ones. You can filter them from serif to sans serif and script and handwritten. But if you click on all classes, and I'll pick one of these to use. So let's go fun. It may be a bit slow using this feature at the moment as it's gathering all of the information online. And as you scroll through, you can see it updates in real time on your image, which is really cool. 
and I quite like that one. When you click on it, it will automatically download that font. So it's just a really quick and effective way to go through so many different font options and find the one that suits your project. Now let's have a look at Generate Similar. So let's start off with a blank document and click on Generate Image. I'm going to pick one of these prompt inspirations on the side here. So I really liked this one. It's a cool mock-up of a can. And it picks all of these automatically for you. And I'll click Generate. OK, so we've got three different images here. But let's say you like one more than the other. How do we generate more images in that similar style? Now we have the option to click these three buttons and click on Generate Similar. So let's do that and see how similar they are to this image. It's done a great job at creating similar looking images as the three new images have a white can, a blue background, and a hand in the shot. Whereas the original three, only one of them had a hand. It's also good if you like an image, but you want to change it as well, as you can generate similar versions of it and hopefully it will produce one that you like. So I've done generate similar on this one with a really blue background and it's produced three very similar images and I may just prefer one of them. So it's a good way to keep generating images to find one that you really like without straying too far from that image. And these actually look pretty good. This one looks great. Generate Similar also works for generative fill and other things like expand. I'll go back to the image of this man and let's expand the bottom of the image. If I click Generate, it should fill that space with three different images. And it's done a really good job of putting legs on the character. Let's just say I really like the look of these jeans, but I want a few different examples. Then just click on Generate Similar, and it should look at this and create three more images with jeans of this color, but slightly different. And it's generated three similar kind of jean images. But I think the original is the best. Now let's have a look at the Enhance Detail feature, which is only available in Photoshop Beta. Let's say I want to get rid of this man on the right here. So I'll just select around him and click Generative Fill. And it's filled it in pretty well. But as we zoom in, we can see the quality of the area that's been generated isn't that great. So if you hover over that generation, you can see this new icon here, which is Enhance Detail. So click on that and it should just take a few seconds and it will enhance that detail. And there you go, it's done a pretty good job. It looks better than before, even though there is some slight oversharpening happening. But if you zoom out, it does look better. So if we go before and after, it just adds a little bit more definition. And I'll do the same in this image. Once again, it's done a really good job of filling in that area. But if we zoom in, we can see it's not as sharp as this part here. So if we hover over, click Enhance Detail, and hopefully it should add a bit of definition to that new area. And it's done a really good job. If we go before and after, there you can see it's just kind of sharpened it up a bit. And that looks great. I would never have known that there was a person standing next to him. This is just another really good feature that will hopefully get better in time. Now let's have a look at the new adjustment brush. So instead of making adjustments using layers, you can come to the brush tool here, click and hold, and you'll see adjustments brush tool. And you can change the settings up here. So you can change brightness and contrast through to saturation and a lot more options. Or you can come down to the taskbar here and change them here as well. So let's say I want to change the saturation. I can paint over this bottle and then move the sliders over here. And as you can see, it's changing it in real time. You can also change the color. And you can do other things like posterize, so it will create that kind of weird effect onto it. You can go to brightness and contrast. You can also click apply to object. And make sure to click on this if you want to see the highlighted object. So as I hover over, you can see it's selecting that item. Or if I hover over here, it will select that item. So you can just click on that. 
and then you can change the settings which will only affect that item. It's a really quick and easy way to change items in your image to however you like them. Okay, we've reached the end of this video, and I think these new features that Adobe have added are really cool, and they're only going to get better. I hope you've learned something in this video. Feel free to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell for more videos like this. If you liked this video, make sure to click the image you can see on screen right now, which will take you to one of our other videos.